Hey folks, it's Pat here. Uh, welcome back. Got a chapter 13 request for you, and that's uh, confidence intervals and prediction intervals from uh, simple linear regression. These look really intimidating, and um, you know, you see this math right here, and it's like, oh, what is that? <laughs> you know, but these aren't that bad. Um, and you can do all the steps in the Alex calculator right here. I'll show you how to do these. Um, you know, but yeah, there's there's a lot of like math in here, but they actually cut out most of the um, the tough stuff. But again, you look at the explanation of a problem like this and you see all of this just like, oh my God, <laughs> and the lines and stuff, yeah. And so the explanation on this one makes it look more intimidating than what it is, but let's just go ahead and knock one of them out here. Okay, uh, blah, 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 you can read all the backstory. You don't really need to know all of that. All right, but because basically what you're doing is you're going to create what's known as a confidence interval or a prediction interval. Now, confidence intervals you're familiar with back from chapter 10, 11. Um, and, you know, so you're doing that around the mean. But in this case, we're going to do both confidence interval and prediction interval. And prediction interval is where we use a predicted value of Y and build an interval around that. Okay. And so the very first thing that you need to do in this problem here and you do this regardless of whether or not it's asking you for confidence intervals or prediction intervals is you need to plug in your value of x to get a predicted value of y. Value of x is given to you in this first problem down here, so 30.3 million in this case, 30.3, and then just plug that in your regression equation, which you're all familiar with, so times .18, okay, so whatever the coefficient is, plus, uh, of course, um, your intercept, or subtract it if it's negative, and so that gives us a predicted value of y, y hat. All right. So then to build the confidence interval, hit this plus minus button because we're going to do one above and one below. Okay. And then of course back from chapter 13 or chapter 11, uh, we need to figure out what our cutoff value is for t. Since these are all samples, we're going to be using t. Uh, use t just about for everything here. Um, and then so of course remember to find our value of t or t value. We take our confidence interval, dot .95, and um, subtract that from 1, so whatever's left over, so .05, and then take that .05, split it in half, all right? So that's going to be .025, because it's two-tail, two-tail test here, all right? Either end, all right? And then degrees of freedom in this case, just take your sample size and uh, subtract 2 from it, because you have two variables, bivariate, okay? And so your degrees of freedom, is in this case, 13 minus 2 is 11. And don't hit enter here, okay, because otherwise you're going to start over. <laughs> All right, so hit your right arrow key, and then the next part of the confidence of the uh, formula for calculating confidence interval, of course, is square root of mean square error, okay? So what you, they give you. <laughs> you don't have to calculate it. Yay! So do that. So square root of that, and then hit your arrow key right again, close parenthesis, and another open parenthesis, because we need to multiply that by the square root of um, this portion of the confidence interval equation, which will give us that value right there. Now, before you do this, there's two things you need to check, all right? Number one, well, I guess just one thing that you need to check, and that's, is it asking you for the confidence interval? If it's asking you for the confidence interval, it's no different than what you were doing back in the previous chapters. If it's asking you for the prediction interval, you have to take this value and add one to it before you look at the square root of it. So punch in the square root. This one's asking us for confidence interval. So confidence interval, we just punch this in directly. Zero is about eight, four, four. Okay, give me another right arrow key. And I'll close parenthesis, be careful with this because if you do this or you just hit close parenthesis right there, uh, it doesn't do it quite right sometimes. All right, so give me an arrow key, right hand arrow key, and then close parenthesis, make sure it's this big one like this. All right, bam, enter. There you go. There's your confidence intervals, plus uh, upper and lower. So one decimal place on this, so our lower is 6.1, and our upper is going to be 11.0. Okay. Cool beans. <clears throat> all right, so that's our confidence interval. That's all the math you have to do. The rest of this is conceptual, all right? Now, in order to do this stuff, you have to understand the difference between confidence interval and prediction interval. Confidence interval, we're looking at like around the mean, okay? And so we're gonna be much more precise in that one. With the prediction interval, we're looking at an individual given value of X predicting a value of Y, Y hat, and building a confidence interval around that Y hat. It is much less precise when we do that, okay? And so the bands are gonna be wider when we're looking at prediction intervals. They're gonna be narrow when we're looking at confidence intervals. So the th two things that's gonna ask you is, 
Where's the center of the interval? Okay, and the second thing, is the band around it wider or narrower? Okay, and so for this one right here, consider but do not actually compute the 95% prediction interval for an individual value for rental revenue when the theater revenue is 30.3 million dollars. So 30.3 is the same as our mean in our confidence interval. So it'll be centered exactly the same, okay? So um, same center as, but it will be wider. Um, well, you gotta read this carefully because it's saying the confidence interval will be wider than the prediction interval. That's false, all right? The prediction interval is always wider than the confidence interval, so it's actually this one, but they would have the same center because we're centered on the same point, 30.3 million. That's what that second half of that explanation problem is trying to explain to you, <laughs> all right? Now, these are a little trickier. I, I typically get these wrong, <laughs> all right? So because this one, so for the theater revenue values in the sample, 74.8, 72.4 million is more extreme than 30.3, so it's way out to the right of 30.3. 72.4 is further from the sample mean than revenue 30.3 is. How would the 95% confidence interval for the mean rental value when the theater revenue is 72.4 million dollars compared to the 95% confidence interval for the mean rental value when it's 30.3? So. It would have a different center, okay, because it's 72.4 rather than 30.3, and it would be much wider because it's way further away from that mean that we're comfortable with, okay? And so it would be, um, you gotta be really careful. Computed from the theater value of 72 would be wider, but would have the same center. Nope. It would be narrower, but have a different center. Nope. It would be seven, narrower, but have the same center. Nope, it's not gonna have the same center. So it's gotta be this one. 72.4 would be wider and have a different center. It would have a different center and it would be much wider because it's much further away from that mean. Check. <laughs> ah, we got them. <laughs> cool beans. All right, so that last one's usually mutually exclusive choices. And so if you get it wrong, just check the center. And if you said wider, then, then the next answer say narrower if it's a different center. Okay. Um, and same thing, this one's almost always going to be same center. So just you know, read it really carefully and go through it slowly. All right. Um, get a few of them wrong. It's absolutely fine. Let's try one more. Let's see if we get a prediction interval here. Yep. We got a prediction interval. Okay. So let's do this one real fast here and just using the steps that I showed you before. So we're going to start with this um, uh, X value and then we're going to get a predicted Y value. So take that, multiply it by uh, your slope or your coefficient. Okay, and then add, in this case, yep, add your intercept. Okay, so to get us a predicted value of y, plus minus on the calculator, okay, you need to look up our t value in here, so 95% prediction or a confidence level, and so what we wanna do is take one minus dot nine five, so dot oh five, split it between the two tails, dot oh two five, I think that's just like the last one. Degrees of freedom, of course, there's sample size bivariate minus two, so that's 18. So we have two variables. Give me a right arrow key and an open parenthesis, and then take the square root of your mean square error. So 6.81, and then give me another arrow key and a close parenthesis and an open parenthesis. Square root. Now this one's asking for prediction interval. And like I said before, if it's confidence interval, you just take the square root of this guy. If it's prediction interval, you take the square root of this guy plus one, okay? For reasons. <laughs> <laughs> as explained in the uh, in the formulas page. So, but anyway, so just make sure if it's prediction interval, add one to this. So one dot one one o eight. Give me another right arrow and a close parenthesis, and bam, there we go. There's our confidence interval. Okay, so it wants one decimal place. So twenty five dot four, and the upper one's thirty six dot nine. Okay. Done with the calculator. So let's take a look. Consider but do not compute 95% confidence interval for the mean used selling price for the mileage is 30.6. 30.6 is the same as this one, 30.6. How would the prediction interval compare to the confidence interval? Prediction interval wider than the confidence interval, but it's centered on the same thing, 30.6, 30.6. So same center add, but would be wider. There we go. Okay. Careful not to scroll. <laughs> so for the mileage values, it's 34.3 is more extreme, so it's to the right. Um, 
And so how would the 95% prediction interval for the mean use selling price when the mileage is 30.6 compared to the 95 when it's 34.4? Okay, so, so this one's a little bit backwards, all right, but be very careful with this. So it has a different center because this one's 34, this one's 30.6. But it's asking you the interval computed from a mileage of 30.6 would be narrower and have a different center. Now it's narrower because it's closer to that mean, okay? The mean, of course, up here, 30.6. This one here, same prediction. It would be narrower than the one that's based upon 34.4 or 34.3. All right, check that. See if I got it wrong. No, nope, I got it right. <laughs> okay. Again, if you get either one of these wrong, as long as you have the center right, you can just choose the other answer, and it'll actually get you where you want to go. Eventually, you get enough of them right where you kind of understand it intuitively. All right. So that's it for uh, this Chapter 13 problem, confidence intervals and prediction intervals. I hope that I made that a little bit more clear than mud, and hopefully you're not scared off by these problems. Just do the work in Alex Calculator, and then read these really carefully. You'll be absolutely fine, and next thing you know, you'll be ready to move on to the hard topic <laughs> in Chapter 13, which we'll cover in another video. We'll see you there. Bye.